very good evening to all of you it's so nice to have you on this uh, very precious forum where we uh, are going to be discussing and uh, interacting about mindfulness how to uh, manage how can mindfulness help in trauma management so today this evening we have dr tamanna professor dr tamanna from amity university you're welcome ma'am good evening and thank you so very much i'm assistant professor with the amity institute of psychology and allied sciences amity university thank you thank you for coming for joining uh, next Thank you, Doctor. So sorry, Professor Doctor Swapnil from Banaras University, BHU. Very nice to have you. Uh, could you say? Could you say if you tell us about yourself a little? Yeah, I am employed at Banaras Hindu University in the Department of Sociology, Faculty of Social Sciences. All right. And uh, next, we have Assistant Professor Doctor Amin from Lovely Professional University. Thank you for coming, Doctor. Really nice to have you this evening. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. This is Dr. Mohammad Amin, one assistant professor, Department of Psychology, Lovely Professional University. Thank you. All right. So we're going to begin our uh, a very very a crucial topic these days that you know we have is how do we how do we use mindfulness in management of traumas where people are. you know suffering from a lot of trauma from the past or present right so can i i'm going to be asking you questions so we'll just discuss and interact more to know more about your views so uh, can i start with dr tamanna it would be nice to uh, i uh, would love to know how do you feel that how is mindful trauma management different from traditional approaches okay uh thank you so very much ekagrita and uh, thank you so very much to all of you um, that we are actually having this discussion on such a pertinent topic and as you mentioned that uh, the very talk about mindfulness and uh, how and in what manner is it related to trauma is being discussed extensively in the present scenario now if we get down to that how a uh, very basically the mindful trauma trauma management is different from traditional approaches is when we do talk more over about the very traditional approaches of dealing in with issues with scenarios pertaining to mental health mental issues or so uh, we go on by uh, diagnosing them or treating on to the very symptoms about uh, what entirely they have been what are the issues what are the aspects while when we talk about a trauma informed practice or a trauma informed management per se we go on by the impact of the trauma that, that it would have had on the very situation uh, the very distress that it would have caused in or the overall aspects pertaining to it and along with that we focus on that how this impact of trauma on that individual's well being uh, you know is somehow interfering with his or her uh, day to day life and we try and create a kind of an environment which is promoting uh, trust which is promoting safety which is promoting healing because when we do talk about a scenario in which an individual has undergone a trauma he or she in itself is not feeling quite okay quite comfortable in the day to day scenario so the overall aspect is on understanding the trauma uh trying and creating an environment which is going to promote a lot of safety uh, uh an aspect of trust uh, the overall emphasis is on safety and trust we try and go on and take on a holistic approach we take on uh, their whole aspect of mind body spirit that is how a lot of our you know uh, awareness aspects practices yoga and everything comes into picture we work on a collaborative uh, uh, domain and along with that a very big emphasis on ensuring that there is a um, uh, there is avoidance of retraumatization so that is moreover the major aspects uh, through which it differs from the traditional approaches and that is why it is something which is being extensively discussed and spoken about in the present scenario 
Right. Thank you. So what we take back is like we have to be more uh, more aware. So mindfulness yes. is more aware. So you that's what uh, it says, right? So traditional approach was more cognitive. Absolutely. Absolutely. And when we even talk about mindfulness, it's more over something that we see a moment to moment awareness. Right. of one's experience like you are aware about each and everything and a very important aspect is it is without judgment right. but we are still aware about every aspect including the very scenario the very situation and that is how it entirely helps us because awareness is the key awareness is the key absolutely thank you and uh, moving forward uh... Dr. Swapnan, uh, how can mindfulness practice help individuals cope with past trauma and cultivate resilience in their daily lives? Okay. So first of all, I would like to mention that uh, I'm not an expert in psychology because I uh, come from uh, sociological training. Uh, so from this perspective, I would like to add to what ma'am already uh, told that uh, the first point is non-judgmental attitude that we have when we practice mindfulness. That is, I think, the most important aspect because when you know that you are not being judged or you are getting enough space to uh, communicate that is, uh, the, you know that the person is listening to you. So then you uh, you are in that position that you can uh, open yourself to the other person. And that would help you to uh, basically cope up with your uh, trauma, uh, past traumas that you have. And also uh, the kind of self-awareness that we develop during uh, the process when we learn mindful uh, practices or for example, simple breathing exercises. Or sometimes also it is recommended that you uh, practice mindfulness through different forms of meditation, whether it is uh, just sitting and taking deep breaths or just writing what is coming to your mind or talking to someone with whom you feel safe and secure. Again, this non-judgment thing comes in. Okay. So uh, these are the things that would actually help us or uh, this these strategies help us to cope with the uh, trauma that we have faced in our past. Right. So uh, Moro, we can also say that, um, can we also say that this is more of acceptance. Nowadays, we need to accept things to move forward. So yeah, acceptance also... without a kind of uh, feeling guilty or anxious of our past and accepting what it is. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sapnil. So now we can, uh, Dr. Amin, uh, can you tell me, uh, can you share some practical tips or exercises for incorporating mindfulness into daily routine to support trauma healing and relationship wellness? Uh, yes. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, as uh, Dr. Tamanna and Dr. Singh have mentioned that mindfulness, the basic purpose of mindfulness is to live in the present, to manage all the things which disturb our daily to day life. So as uh, Dr. Singh also mentioned that how it is very useful for our life. So there should be some practices and we as uh, as we all are applying, we are following these practices here. I would like to mention some uh, uh, common or we can some basic tips which will help us uh, to get free from all those disturbances which badly affect our mental health or psychological well-being uh, one uh, we have mindful breathing that is one common and easiest way uh, to uh, make you peaceful like uh, what we had to do we had to take few minutes each day and focus on our breathing like uh, inhale exhale just to do one nowadays artificial intelligence is also working on it and we are using smartwatch and everything so they have mentioned all these things and definitely we can get the help from them second uh, one i will mention like uh, we have uh, mindful or you can say gratitude practices we all every since morning when we wake up we say good morning to everyone we say hi namaste salam whatever and this is also one of the basic because we all as a human being we all are a spiritual being also we have separate inside okay so uh, we say like uh, 
uh, I can say that gratitude is one of the important thing for as a human being. It should be with us, be with us every time. So reflecting on things like uh, uh, you are grateful to each day. We should be thankful to everyone, and definitely it is really we are grateful to each day. We are here. It is only because we are lucky one. Uh, send another thing which is common for all. It is not new. I'm not here mentioning the psychological terms. Maybe it may be a little different or I uh, would like to say that mindfulness, everyone can do it by sitting the home. And uh, we have one more uh, practice like we can say that body skin, body skin meditation is there. Like we are just to sit down, lay on or we can say scan your sensation think what about we are going to do pursue the things properly it will help us to release uh, because uh, i remember that uh, segment five like the basic purpose was to release the things what disturbs me so meditation or mindful actress mindful practices will help def definitely they are helping us so skin uh, uh, yourself skin your body by just lay down notice your toe, notice your body parts i can say notice your body parts uh, experience experience what you think how you think and uh, because everything is because of our vision when we look the things so the information is transferred from this world to uh, to, uh, to us and we interpret the things again accordingly and we uh, we uh, make the things according so the basic uh, purpose here i am talking about is that when we uh, do the scanning for my body how i am talking how where i should go what i should do okay that is another useful technique and another important communication as mentioned uh, ma'am have both the doctors have mentioned that communication it is just that communication when we talk about when we have to communicate to others it should be properly we should uh, focus on our conversation just so when i am talking another one should listen when they are talking i should listen so they're listening carefully uh this another one is love loving i can say loving kindness loving kindness is also very useful and uh most we as a mother as a father we show this type of meditation to our child uh, so definitely it will uh, like wishing what is that we talk about uh happy birthday what is this is that it's just wishing to someone so it is the loving kindness man say happiness how are you every day we say how are you good morning good evening that these are the signs of this uh, kindness or they are the signs of this loving towards uh uh, yourself and love to society. So these are some useful techniques, daily useful techniques, and we are doing think, realize, and practice. That is, uh, we can say, the useful technique which come under the man mindful mindfulness. And they be, uh, they really help us. They really help us. Thank you, Doctor. I mean, I mean, this was really a nice uh, refreshment. You know, we know these things, but we uh, tend to just put them back. And uh, definitely, we know the all these things, and we are not practicing. <laughs> Yes, yes. Yeah. Thank you for bringing these uh, useful uh, tips. And uh, okay, we can move forward again. So, Dr. Tamanna, we can put another question. Let's discuss further. Uh, how does trauma affect our ability to form and maintain healthy relationships? And how can mindfulness help navigate these challenges? Um. What I would uh, uh, very categorically mention is, I think, the overall uh, discussion that we are having. When we do talk about a trauma, it's most of the time any kind of an event, any kind of a aspect which has had an impact on an individual. Uh, you know, it could be anything. It could be a loss of a loved one. It could be, uh, you know, undergoing uh, an experience which has left its impact or so. And most of the time, what entirely has been seen is that individuals undergoing trauma are uh, at times unable to communicate their uh, real aspects, their real feelings, their real domains. Along with that, at times, they are unable to carry on with their day-to-day -day practices. See, when we do talk about uh, each one of us, there are individual differences. We have our own ways of dealing with situations and scenarios. And most of the time, like if I take an example of losing a loved one, uh, everybody has their own process of grief, their own time frame of dealing with it. And it's perfectly fine if they take in some time frame. And, and all of us have our own resilient ways of dealing with it. Like we are able to cope on with it. We find our own ways. 
but there are individuals there are times when it keeps on lingering in it interferes with their day to day um, activities their day to day tasks uh, you know at times uh, those thoughts those processes keep coming back uh, uh, not being able to cope uh, with the scenario not being able not being able to accept uh, the very loss out know over there now these are some very very basic as uh, impacts being found uh, when we talk about trauma mindfulness as we have been talking and as dr singh and dr amin have also mentioned it's more over about being in the moment being in that uh, uh, purpose scenario in which you know that what is uh, happening what is the aspect at that very time frame the level of awareness now mindfulness can certainly help in dealing with uh, uh, or uh, you know navigating through these challenges in a manner because most of the time when an individual goes through a distressing time frame or so they are aware about they know about it i would not use the term uh, aware they know about it sabko pata hai but the very aspect of accepting it taking it on to your own self is what mindfulness entirely means so mindfulness is more over being not just knowing about it but accepting it into their day to day scenario and into their day to day processes and that is how it entirely helps as dr i mean was mentioning about various practical tips or so i think these things do help in simply writing them down simply being aware about what your thoughts are simply being aware about kaun sa time hai when you remember the person the maximum and uh what are the instances at which you do how and um, um uh, sir also mentioned about uh, the freudian notion or so psycho bahut sare psychology ki uske abhi baat nahi agar hum day to day uski bhi baat kare we have our own mechanisms of dealing with it hum automatically we are able to replace it with something more concrete losing a loved one that loved one always wanted you to complete a specific task and you trying and replacing it and working so mindfulness at that moment would also be the very awareness of those things and those aspects and shifting your focus from the very negative to aspect or the negative domain to the positive ones the negative ones uh, when we say positivity when we talk about positivism it is more over about acknowledging the negatives acknowledging the loss acknowledging things which are not out no matter so that is how uh, mindfulness really helps in navigating through these challenges and i think it has been given in by uh, experts practitioners researchers everybody so that's what i would like to put across thank you that was a very nice information you know how uh, these days how we have the most problems are the you know relationships and how uh, we need this uh these techniques these tips to resolve these issues and to navigate through our problems and and there's nothing better than mindfulness you know everybody understands how, what is mindfulness you know so moving forward uh, uh dr amin can we ask you this how can mindfulness enhance communication and emotional intimacy with relationships particularly in context with trauma healing Uh, yes uh, as you talk about that how mindfulness enhances communication as well as emotional intimacy with the relationship uh, to those who are having such type of trauma healing so, yeah, we can say that definitely a mindfulness is based for it is for that purpose we can say because uh, there are different things when we talk about how it will enhance the communication as uh, early we mentioned that it is self acceptance as i told you that it is uh, listening properly definitely when we talk about how it will enhance the things there are different things uh, different ways it will help for example active listening as i told you that we should listen properly so it can enhance the communication we have the lack of communication because of this we have a lot of issues even in relationship when if there is any type of we can call down why they are not able to have their uh, solution because they are not uh, ready to listen 
there is a communication glitch or you can say they are having for example i am saying something uh to uh, that person she or he is not listening it properly or he is not ready to listen i can see he is not ready to listen so presence active listening is important thing so when we talk to someone when we uh discuss on anything so it should be carefully uh, we should be care uh, careful in listening we should be active listeners and we should uh, we should be at present we should uh, we should be at present second thing we non verbal cues nor we can say the non verbal communication um i can say most of the time uh, our communication is non verbal and we should try to understand what uh, if the subject or if the person is talking about how uh we should understand his body language we should try to understand his or her facial expression is a tone of language is also important because the things we used to do in the counseling also because how the subject is talking understand the paraphrases why he is repeating the things and definitely when we try to understand if i am coming to home late night my family is not properly my wife is not talking to me properly or wife comes to her husband is not talking to properly we should listen we should try to understand why she is going to uh, we should, she or he, he or she is going to avoid me or the child uh, most of the time this thing as you mentioned that lot of the problems even even the relationship problems are there so definitely the child come to home uh, from school or from office go wo apne room pe jata and uh, definitely we are not able to focus and kyun kya kar rahe why they are using this thing why this type of behavior is now and we should try to understand their uh, non verbal communication is and another important thing is that it not only helps you to be active listener it not helps you to be a good communicator but it helps us in emotional regulation and conflict resolution because communication is that thing we are lot of crisis or we can say uh, we can solve the best things through communicating one another right. so it is yeah uh, we can uh, if what type of conflicts are there what type of uh, we can say that uh misunderstanding is there it can be easily done through this type of communication and definitely they have communication through mindfulness one is communication as uh, we are doing second one is communication through mindfulness that is very useful and definitely it will help us in the uh, we can say emotional regulation because when we communicate when we uh, have a conversation properly through mindfulness when we listen the things properly a lot of conflicts can be easily solved and we can also another important thing is that uh true communication when i say you have someone someone is there for you main hu aapke liye main hu na i can talk about the main hu na so the lot of trust building we can build the trust also so because the subject thinks that uh, i am alone there is no one to support me yahi hota hai these things happen uh, nowadays most of the time because uh, in this uh, we can say that uh, present world we all are ko uh, main kal a few days before i was uh, saying some i was uh, watching some uh, reels wo keh raha ki sir nahi jhukayenge sir katayenge but here we all are sir jhuka ke like this is the device jiski wajah se hum sir jhukaye hue hote hain so the thing is that uh, no one is there only mobile phone is there but through communication with meditation it will help us to build trust and understand vulnerability it will also help in healing it will do as a healing practice healing technique because two words we can heal lot of things i will give the one example that uh, uh, when we go for gym we are able to hold the weight of 20 kg for 2 minutes for 3 minutes but uh, when someone says single word we are not able to hold it we used to cry and really it uh, pains pains us so uh, uh, the word is very uh, dangerous it as well as the word can be very useful also so through mindfulness we can the selection of the words i am talking about through this selection of the words when i select my words properly when i have the communication with that person who is uh, the victim of this thing definitely we will help them and uh, it is not only me it is uh, the subject or that person can help herself or himself also because uh, self introspection mindfulness is uh, directly linked with self introspection through this we can introspect ourselves kahan se mujhe galtiyan hogi kahan where i am lacking about and how i can do it so these are some things where we can say that mindfulness really enhances uh, communication 
and we really enhance emotional stability or emotional regulation to those people who are the victim of trauma. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. That was very nicely explained. Uh, and what we take back is that we need to be more empathetic you know, in a relationship. Empathy is very, very uh, important. Okay, moving forward, we'll go further in discussion. So, Dr. Swapnil, uh, how can mindfulness contribute to creating a supportive and nurturing environment for oneself and for one's partner in a relationship affected by past trauma? Okay, so I would like to continue from where uh, Dr. Amin was talking, like uh, the first point that he mentioned about active listening, where the person feels that the person is not just physically present, but the other person or the intimate partner uh, uh, in, the, in a relationship is actually present both mentally and physically. So that feeling of uh, being listened or being heard and also being understood is very important for uh, any kind of uh, relationship uh, where we seek nurturing uh, right. or uh, recovering from past trauma. Uh, the second thing is uh, that there is this common misunderstanding uh, that uh, the intimate relations do not need space. But uh, the respect for the other person's space is also very important. For example, if a person is uh, is dealing with some kind of past trauma and the person needs some time and space to open about that uh, past event so that space and that time should be given to the other person and we should not be just uh, asking the same question again and again and again because it might happen that the person who is the sufferer may choose some other time after some uh, days maybe to reveal what happened in the past or whenever the person feels comfortable. So we should be able to give our partner that time and space for that person to speak for themselves on their own. They should feel comfortable to share with us. And uh, the another important factor is that uh, when you start judging your partner, knowingly or unknowingly, uh, giving examples uh, from uh, your previous conversations maybe, if someone shares something with you that is personal uh, to someone and whenever you uh, enter into some kind of conflict with each other so you start giving the same examples maybe to uh, com comment on the person or maybe to taunt the person so that person will never be able to share the personal traumas with their partners again so that uh, compassion and empathy is required for uh, for any kind of relationship and specifically if we are talking about intimate partners so that understanding that space that feeling of being heard that feeling of being non-judgment uh, ju being non-judgmental and also uh, giving enough space and time is very important right thank you nice and like the discussion is going further and you know more uh, interesting <laughs> Okay, uh, Dr. Tamana, uh, how can mindfulness uh, help individuals identify and break patterns and uh, patterns of behavior and thought that have been rooted in the past trauma? So, how do you think they can? How can mindfulness help? Uh, see, what I would say is because I I think that is precisely what we have been discussing across. Uh, uh, most of the time, as uh, Dr. Swapnil just mentioned, most of the time um, uh, when we say it's usually the thoughts which really need a change or which really need to be, uh, um, you know, understood, acknowledged and worked upon. So moreover, mindfulness as uh, an overall practice per se, when we talk about awareness, it's about being aware about the very thoughts and eventually the way they, they get down to a behavior aspect per se. So uh, in order to explain it in very uh, simple aspects, some uh, I would like to take an example of very simple tips or practical tasks or activities we indulge in. Like when we say we try writing it down, or uh, we uh, at times we also get down to letting the very individual who is undergoing trauma or any process to draw it out. What are we entirely trying to do is whatever they are going through over here as a part of their thoughts, because an individual undergoing a trauma is usually having 
unlimited thoughts pertaining to it. And there are many aspects to it, like as just now you know, what Dr. Swapnil just mentioned, that even in a relationship, uh, we should not always be moreover like that. What happened? Kya hua tha? There are times that they're not very comfortable with that. So now, uh, in order for them to be able to break down or understand that whether, whether, the, whether the very behavior or the aspect that they are entirely getting in is not the one that is expected, at first, they really need to understand and be aware about that. So some of that, coming back to the very activity, like I mentioned, it can be writing down what they are going through, the very thought, what is it entirely coming in mind. Uh, there are times, again, if I take on the example of that, when, when an individual loses someone, it's more of a like, why did my this person had to go? Why is it happening to me? What is it more of a like, what if the scenario would have been? So re mindfulness at first, uh, being the very practice gives the very individual a chance to be aware about the instance, about the very aspect that has happened, and then being able to replace that thought, which may be a thought a faulty aspect or a faulty domain to so replace it with something which is more positive in nature, something which is more attainable, something which can be undertaken uh, in order for them to cope in with the very scenario. So mindfulness as a practice can entirely help them to replace their negative thoughts with the positive ones or so being aware about them letting it be a part of their overall system and eventually the same coming down onto their behavior because when we do talk about the overall cycle of thoughts emotions and action per se it's all a cycle so once the thoughts change and it entirely comes in onto their very emotions, onto their very actions, and eventually the individual is able to deal in with the situation. So if you say simple shabdo ke kaha jaya ki mindfulness as a practice, because they are in the present moment, it's a moment to moment thing, trying and understanding what has happened. Uh, you know, you can't entirely say it to a person that it's absolutely fine that you lost someone. Yeah. Losing, uh, losing your parent, losing. It cannot be ki nahi koi baat nahi. Ye to hona hi tha. It has to come from the very individual. It has to come from the very person. There has to be an aspect of understanding the overall system, and it happens at an individual basis. Mindfulness helps over there as a practice, as an instance. So that is what I would really, and that is how it breaks down the very uh, patterns possible. And um, uh, I think all the research in psychology, in sociology or so, has very categorically pointed on to the very importance. Because even if I go at the sociological level, I think uh, at a family level, at the whole kinship level or so, I think yehi hai, which has been helping us deal with situations and scenarios. The good part is now we are discussing it over. It is coming out, out and over there, even in the professional domain and at the personal right very nice very beautifully said okay um how what is the okay dr swapnil can you tell me let's discuss what is mindful presence according to you and its role in fostering deeper connections and intimacy with relationships especially for those who've had you know a trauma in the past life so what like okay. mindful presence discuss uh, as i previously mentioned that mindful yeah. presence is uh, somewhere again related to being there not only physically but mentally and uh, the communication part or your gestures your body language speaks a lot even if you are for example if you're telling someone that i'm here i'm listening to you and your body language talks otherwise so that is an important aspect when you talk about mindful presence so you are present for someone and uh, the, the other person should realize that the, uh, you are present for them, uh, both physically and emotionally, for, uh, for uh, on someone whom they can rely. Again, uh, telling anyone uh, their confidential issues or uh, sharing secrets require that uh, support system. Or uh, your mindful presence would actually help them to cope up uh, and will help them to share what they uh, want to share or 
uh, even if they have not got any chance till now to share something that they wanted to share uh, since long. So your mindful presence, the way of your communication, uh, the way you make them feel uh, would help them or will show your mindful presence for them. Okay. Anybody else would like to add on anything? Dr. Tamanna, mindful presence. I think it's a very, very crucial uh, mindfulness yeah. is mindful presence. Like Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think uh, Dr. Swapnil has uh, uh, informed about it very beautifully. Yeah. What I would just like to add on is that when we entirely see mindfulness, mindfulness is moreover uh, the very awareness about all the flows and of the experience which is out and over there your thoughts your emotions your body sensations all your uh, you know personalities attitudes and everything when we see mindfulness or mindful presence presence is moreover when uh, we are able to have the very stability of these aspects or uh, very uh, uh, if we put it across in very simple terms when we are actually grounded in this awareness one aspect is being aware and uh, you know uh, of all the experiences which are out and over there being alert about everything observing your thoughts your emotions your attitudes all of your dynamics or so when we say mindful presence it's moreover that we are able to stabilize the same also we are able to work on to this that we are in, it's somehow grounded in this well, level of awareness too that is what entirely it goes in. And when we say mindful presence, I think mindful presence entirely means and, and goes uh, in detail about self-regulation also. It talks about empathy. It gets down to accepting yourself, accepting the very aspects out and over there. And a very, very important aspect of curiosity also. You know, uh, that uh, and uh, at times we also see the very receptiveness in terms of or the very interrelationship that we have with the universe, with the entities around. I think Dr. Amin, when he started on, he mentioned about the aspects of spirituality, yeah. that how and in what manner do we entirely get, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, somehow attuned to our purpose and meaning in life, the interrelationship, the interrelatedness per se, understanding about how there can be different aspects, different things, being open about possibilities. So when we say mindful presence, I think mindful presence includes all of these aspects. It goes on to the non-judgmental entity, being flexible, being able to deal on with. And that is how it can entirely help an individuals in dealing with uh, the very aspects of any um, of the traumatic experiences being out and over there. Nice. Thank you. So basically, living in the moment is also yes. very You have to yes. be present. We can't. Yes. Being living in the moment and helps relationships, you know, better yes. because you're not uh, really thinking about what fight you had before, but you just, yeah. it's that moment. And being, you and being grounded in that awareness, that yes. level of awareness, because that is also very, very important. Yes. Just knowing is not going to help. Yes. And I and think uh, what Dr. Amin was mentioning, your active listening, deep listening. Very important. You know, very al important. Allowing you to, you know, uh, they being able to cater on to things. Most of the time, kya hota hai? traumatic experience, hota hai. a person who is going through a uh, victim aspect bhi aa jata hai. and it becomes difficult to even uh, listen to others also, not just uh, that others are not able to listen to the victim. At times, the, the person and himself or herself is also not able to cater on or listen on to things also. So that exactly. is how it goes. Nice. <clears throat> Loving this discussion further, you know, it's uh, <laughs> started off well. So let's moving, uh, move on forward. Uh, Dr. Amin, uh, how can mindfulness practice support individuals in setting and maintaining healthy boundaries in relationships? Very important, you know, Louis. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, how uh, it can, uh, as I told in my previous talk that uh, mindfulness plays a vital role in maintaining relationship and definitely it will <coughs> sorry <coughs> it will support individuals uh, in different ways uh, as uh, we already talked about uh, through increasing self-awareness so definitely mindfulness cultivate awareness of one's needs preferences as well as limits 
so when we are aware about my needs what are my needs what are my preferences and what are my limits so definitely i can maintain healthy relationship okay second thing is uh we talk about clarity of intention clarity of intention is important thing because what i was talking about what it support to be my intention was this it was it is already we can as i told in my previous talk a ma'am told me or dr singh also mentioned that uh, in relationship different things happen so sometimes i am talking to some different way but the subject or the second person take it in different way so we should be clear what was my intention because uh, it is only through intention uh, clarity we can say that miss clarity and intention a lot of things uh, we can say goes wrong so mindfulness helps individual clarity uh, their intention uh, their values uh, in relationship what how um, i should maintain my relationship what was my intention for example uh, even it is also uh, we can say while recognizing the boundaries uh, boundaries uh, what are my boundaries where i should be or i should not uh, i should not be okay so these things will also help in uh, the are some practices which help really helpful in uh, maintain healthy boundaries in their relationship or effective communi uh, communication which i already discussed then self compassion is also important thing yeah, mindfulness foster it helps self compassion self acceptance empowering individuals to set my boundaries for example what are my boundaries what are my required what are my we can say that limits also so self care self respect the all come and one important thing is that resilience resilience in conflict so mindfulness uh, when we talk about this thing it really it is very useful technique uh, uh, in improving a resilience it helps us we can say that build resilience and emotional regulations uh, it enables individual to negate to uh, we can say that to negative conflicts around the, what or uh, the boundaries around it okay so uh, through resilience or we can say that uh we can talk about uh boundaries which we are able to uh, maintain so i am able to maintain it helps me mindfulness so we can talk about uh when i have any conflict because a lot of things happen every time uh, because uh, the every day is not under my uh, under my control anything can happen a lot of crisis can be there so i how i can come out so the mindfulness will help me to be resilient it will help me to be uh, to build a strong uh, we can say the strong as well as positive resilience because resilience is important for psychological well being if i have we can say poor resilience spouse and definitely a lot of things i will be disturbed with very small things so definitely mind uh, mindfulness help us <coughs> it uh, we can say that build uh, resilience and compensate boundaries Uh, for adjustment and so other things there are some we can say that ways how mindfulness help in maintaining the strong boundaries so basically your your boundaries your conflict should be you should be clarity in your intention you should be clarity in your thoughts okay you should be we should be aware what are my limits and uh, what are my we can say that boundaries so these things are there. okay thank you that was very very informative and uh... Okay, let's move on forward with the last uh, uh, point of discussion, um, Dr. Swapnan. What are some strategies for incorporating mindfulness into conflicts? How would mindfulness help? Okay, so as uh, Dr. Mean mentioned, that every day is not under our control, so anything can happen at any moment. Absolutely. So first thing that I feel is that whatever happens. Uh, we generally uh, tend to react rather than responding to the situation or what the other person is saying to us so our uh, the common uh, thing is that uh, we listen to react or to respond rather than to understand what the other person is saying so that should be uh, kept in mind so while practicing mindfulness uh, what we can do is that we should take some time 
to respond as it is commonly said that before reacting onto something or when you are angry you should at least come from 1 to 10 so that you will calm down and then you will respond to what other person is saying so that thing is the first thing that you should calm down and this will not come automatically this will definitely come when you start practicing mindfulness with mindfulness comes this awareness that you should be calm uh, you, you should try to be calm at least in conflict uh, situations and also uh, being self aware uh, helps you to understand the perspective of the other person when you keep yourself in the other person's shoes you know what the other person is saying or maybe what you understand about certain thing uh, might be the half truth so uh, understanding and viewing things from others perspective your perspective is also important which will help you to actually come to some kind of resolution of a conflict and also uh, uh, the the common attitude of being self centered that if i have said something for example in uh, the classrooms also uh, most uh, common attitude of teachers is i am the teacher if i have said something that that is the correct thing so uh, we should be in a position to accept what is wrong or if we are uh wrong so this thing acceptance of what is right and what is wrong and if we are wrong at some point of time we should be acknowledging that thing and uh, when we when it comes to conflict resolution definitely uh stereotyping that we do that before knowing the other uh, person's uh, version or other version of any event or any uh, situation that is taking place we tend to come to a conclusion it happens a lot of times especially with the coming of social media and uh, uh, the internet digital age it is very common to develop a certain kind of a stereotype or certain uh, perception about anything that is taking place so uh, if we practice mindfulness uh, it will be easier for us to resolve uh, the conflict situations that we are facing Wow, I think that was very, very well explained, Doctor mm -hmm. Swapnil. You said you're not from the psychology background, but I think your answer was very apt. You know how uh, you said respond and react. That was uh, a very good uh, point to end with. Actually, that how one must uh, not listen to respond uh, to react, but to respond. You know that that's a very uh, important thing in relationships. Anybody else would like to give any? Um, strategies coming to your mind, Dr. Tamanna, doctors, I mean. I think uh, I would also say the same thing. I think Dr. Swapnil uh, has mentioned it very beautifully. And uh, I think when we say uh, any conflict or so, mindful communication is the key because that is what is going to entirely transform any kind of conflict into an, an opportunity for, for the growth or working on with very individuals or so you know uh, when, uh, as mentioned by dr swapnil when we talk about any scenario if uh, an individual is listening if an individual is open to uh, you know uh, cater to different perspectives different aspects is actually even approaching conflicts with a deeper level of curiosity in order to understand that what entirely went through, what is the scenario, how can we entirely go ahead. And undertaking mindful mindful communication is a two-way approach, per se. Being aware about your perspective, being aware about the other's perspective. So if mindful communication is being undertaken, that is something which will uh, somehow change that very conflict into a very big opportunity for growth. And rather, it helps in strengthening the relationships. Absolutely. Because that is what we have always seen. Conflict hua, get yeah. kuch problem hui kuch, and then you get down to a communicative aspect and you see that the things are further strengthened. And that is how entirely the whole aspect goes in. So that is what I would entirely like to add on. Very nicely said. Yes, we need to move in the in a relationship. We need to keep moving forward, improving, and keep uh, uh, forgetting or resolving with every fight we need to resolve <laughs> yeah absolutely Absolutely. and we are able to do that only when we are first aware about what entirely when happened. we are mindful about when we are mindful about <laughs> what entirely happened absolutely about our thoughts about our action about our reaction we are yes. very very mindful otherwise i think all of us know about forgive and forget and then move ahead <laughs> <Exactly>. but <laughs> easier said than done
सो दैट इज वॉट इंटायरली इट इज आई थिंक माइंडफुल कम्युनिकेशन का मेन एस्पेक्ट द मेन टैग रूल इंटायरली कम्स डाउन टू दिस ओनली and i dr mean what would you like to add on as yeah, we are yeah, closing yeah, this yeah, call yeah, yeah. yes uh, really as we start from a self awareness and uh, uh, that is that is uh, self awareness is the main thing here uh, we should be like um, uh, we should observe our thoughts we should observe our emotions also so when we talk about the self awareness it is it comes uh, it involves everything whether what are your uh, limits what are your needs what are your strengths weaknesses even uh, some thought we can we should observe our thoughts also we should observe our uh, emotions uh, because uh, during conflict because, uh, for example uh, during conflict if we observe my thoughts my emotions then definitely the conflicts will not be much more arise they will uh, we will uh, easily control them and another thing is uh, we have uh, as ma'am uh, uh, mentioned that uh, we should take breaks yeah but on the other hand we should uh, we can stay present also present mind what to do what not to do when should because uh, sometimes we take the such decision and uh, that badly affects our life so uh, when we are uh, present when we stay in present we say we can say keep our attention what is going on okay what uh, the all things uh, uh, the all things can be only when we are self aware so self aware ki mujhe subah ye tha ab shaam ko ye ho gaya to why why it happened so a uh, self introspection is there so these things will help us uh, to there are some like we can say that uh, strategies which will really help us uh, to be a calm we can say the peaceful uh, peaceful human being and another thing is uh, ma'am take take breaks yes we should we are not a uh, we are not a machine we should take break definitely we should take break when we find that it uh, bus exhaust ho gaya to we should take even i uh, used to say yesterday i will share one important thing yesterday my scholar uh, yesterday there was no classes for me so my scholar came to me and uh, we was uh, we are working on midlife crisis we are also working on uh, test construction so since morning to evening uh, we when we try to find the factorial analysis so it was kuch uh, miss communication ho raha tha miss command ho rahi thi to subah se hum lage hue the so i told him take rest take rest and tomorrow morning she called me sir i have done it so it was only and only when we take break because lot of things we uh, because when we exhaust so definitely we are not able to take the decisions properly sometimes if i during exhaustion or when we are we tired and we take something that may be wrong so we should take uh, breaks when uh, we uh, when it uh, requires we should take we should choose our words mindfully we should uh, choose this, uh, a selection of words should be properly and one more last thing which i start that should we should practice for forgiveness and letting go ki logon ka kaam hai kehna log to kehte rahenge whatever they will they will do and definitely i will also do the same thing but i should forgive wo kitna na do best and forget so definitely practice forgiveness and letting go will help us to be a uh, uh, we can say peaceful human being yeah Yeah. i think just last one aspect to be added in practicing one level of stillness also i just got reminded of the same yesterday we had um, um, a very uh, important festival of mahashivratri and if we entirely go by that spiritual notion it goes on to the very aspect of being still aaj ki date ke andar as we say that when we get down to breaks or so we are so used to always being on the go like even right now even if we are working on if we are if we are constantly into something and i think yesterday only i was listening to one of the aspect in which they just spoke about an experiment in which it was being said that people were being asked in us they were being asked and i think sadguru was mentioning it that they were being asked just to sit still and not doing anything without their mobile phones or anything in a room all uh, um, you know all across white uh, uh, colored walls or so and they had to do just nothing they had to just sit still but they were being provided with an option that if you feel you may take a small kind of a electric shock or so for a very minor one a mild one if you and what was being seen was that most of them a uh, uh, rather a maximum majority of the uh, you know the population that uh, as per the stats they want they were uh, open to taking on that 
shock, that minor shock. So which entirely says that how difficult it is for us to even being still. So when we say mindfulness, when we say mindful presence, mindful aspect, the initial parameter is being still first. And it is going to start on with taking on bricks. Start actually acknowledging that it is required and then moving on with uh, different aspects. Like abhi bhi agar hum se kaha jaye ki sab kuch chhodkar, bas just be still and do nothing. You'll be more of a like, how is how are we going to do that? So that is how it is. And I think that is what is going to entirely help everybody uh, moving on from. And as Dr. Amin, Dr. Singh, and they have been mentioning that in any case, I think wahi zarurat hai. And that is how we will be able to respond well. We will be able to acknowledge everything and uh, move on with things. I, I felt like, uh, because I think when Dr. Amin was mentioning it and he was quoting the very example, I think that's a very important one. That's how it goes in. Great. Wow. I think we have abundance of uh, uh, information, very, very useful information about how to use mindfulness you know in our lives and uh, moreover how can mindfulness help to resolve dramatic you know uh, instances that we have in our lives and how can mindfulness help resolve make relationships better and uh, thank you so so much dr tamanna dr swapnil dr mean for uh, joining this speaking cube forum and uh, thank you so much for this lovely discussion and interactive session. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so thank very you. much to everybody for thank this you. Thank you. speaking to you. Thank you.